Sebaceous hyperplasia is a small skin lesion which mainly appears on the face and it affects many people. I'm here to break it down into simple lay terms so that you can better understand what it is, why it occurs and what you can do about it. It's a benign, meaning non-cancerous skin lesion. It's really just an enlargement or an overgrowth in sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands make sebum, which is an oily substance that keeps our skin moisturized and protected. Hyperplasia just means an increase in number of the cells. These little glands grow in size, forming small yellowish or flesh-colored bumps on the skin. They're mainly found in the face, particularly around the forehead, cheeks, and around the nose. Here are some examples. As you can see, there are small yellowish spots. They don't come and go like acne or rosacea spots, and they are mainly around the center of the face and forehead. And that's not really surprising, as that's where most of these oily, sebum-producing sebaceous glands are located. Now, people tend to have more than one and can often have multiple. It's believed to be related to a combination of factors such as age is more common in middle-aged and older adults. And it's thought that as the skin's natural oil production decreases with age, the overgrowth of the sebaceous glands may be a compensatory mechanism to maintain skin hydration. Hormones, particularly androgens or the male hormones, genetics or family history may predispose you to developing them also. Sebaceous hyperplasia is not dangerous and poses no threat to your overall health. However, there is one common type of skin cancer which can look a bit like sebaceous hyperplasia. It's called basal cell carcinoma or BCC for short. Basal cell carcinomas don't grow out of sebaceous hyperplasia. They aren't related at all. It's just that a small BCC can start out looking a bit like sebaceous hyperplasia. Other features of BCC are a slow, continuous growth and they can also form a scab or a crust and then heal and then form another scab and heal. And here's some examples of BCCs. If you're ever in doubt, it's always best to consult with a healthcare professional trained in skin lesion recognition for a proper evaluation and diagnosis. Health professionals trained in skin lesion recognition use a dermatoscope, which can easily identify a BCC from sebaceous hyperplasia. While sebaceous hyperplasia doesn't require any treatment, some people may choose to pursue treatment options for cosmetic reasons. And here's a few options that can help reduce their appearance. Firstly, cryotherapy. Now this involves freezing the affected sebaceous glands, which causes them to shrink and eventually disappear. Laser therapy can also be used in some clinics or electrocautery where a small amount of local anesthetic is put into the skin and then the sebaceous glands are treated with an electrical current. There is also evidence for the use of topical retinoids such as tretinoin. They can benefit and reduce the number of enlarged sebaceous glands. Some doctors also use oral isotretinoin or roaccutane. It can reduce the number and size of sebaceous gland hyperplasia also. It's important to note that these treatments may not completely prevent sebaceous hyperplasia from recurring. So in conclusion, sebaceous hyperplasia is a harmless yet sometimes bothersome skin condition. I hope you got value from this video and if you did, please hit the like button as it helps YouTube share the video more widely. Watch this playlist for other videos in the series of It's Not a Mole and you can learn more about various other benign skin lesions. Hopefully see you soon.